Number 21, Missouri, and number 15, Alabama. We'll round out our big three. This is the 230 game on ABC. Guys, uh, this line, when I wrote the preview, was Alabama minus 13 and a half. Since then, uh, the announcement that Brady Cook is, quote, highly doubtful for Saturday has been released by multiple sources. And now it's up to Bama minus 17. It might have even gone even higher as we've been recording these first two games. We took it at 13 and a half. So as you give your picks, reference the 13 and a half. Uh, and, and I guess I'll start by saying this line feels like a trap, doesn't it? Alabama's coming off a loss. They look disoriented. They're di- undisciplined. The penalties have absolutely wrecked the Crimson Tide. You've got pictures of, you know, Ryan Williams painting his nails this week and uh, guys, quotes like guys are more interested in TikTok. I, was that Kirk Herbst? Uh, no, no. Um, Greg McElroy said that the program is more interested in TikTok than they are in winning football games. All of the noise would have you leaning in favor of Missouri to win this or to cover, maybe even win Tuscaloosa. I feel like this is just the world's largest trap game. So I, I've been wrong every time I've tried to outsmart the trap, outsmart the line. I'm just going to go with gut intuition on this one and say, I feel like Alabama figures something out and they win by 14 plus. Without Brady Cook, it's hard to see a path to victory for Mizzou. That offense was disgusting and even worse than it had been when Drew Pine was in. The Drew Pine experience in Tuscaloosa is not really something that I want to (laughs) put my hard-earned American currency on, but I also don't think I can confidently say Alabama is going to go out and dominate an SEC football team at this no. point right now. I took Mizzou plus the points before the quarterback switch. I'm going to roll with it. I'm going to stay, especially if you give me the 16 and a half or 17 point line. I just don't trust Alabama to play cohesive complementary football right now. They've got to show it to me. If their defense is doing great, their offense can't move the ball and take advantage of the other team's mistakes. Mm-hmm. If their offense is doing great. Their defense can't get off the field on third down. They're not playing good complementary football right now. They feel like two separate teams, depending on who has the ball. So until I see it, I'm going to take them to not just absolutely destroy an SEC football team. Mizzou's defense has looked improved over the last couple of weeks. I know they got blitzed against A&M, but looked better against Auburn. The defense stood tall when they needed to, to hold that win down. And the defense, I think, can maybe disrupt Alabama a little bit and keep this a little bit closer. Yeah, I was getting ready to just vibes pick this game and just say, all right, look, Alabama, the vibes are terrible. They've lost a couple games. Everybody's complaining. Missouri, they need this, right? They're coming off a big comeback win where, you know, Cook gets knocked out. He's a tough guy. He comes back in after hospital tests, and I'm sure we're going to see a whole 30 for 30 on that one. I think they even said they were going to put it in a little video. So, you know, I was getting ready to talk about, you know, Brady Cook showed something to the locker room. They're going to be fired up this week, ready to go. They're going into Tuscaloosa. So they got all the momentum on their side, playing with house money. And I'm throwing all that out the window uh, because Brady Cook's not playing. And that was my vibes. My vibes were all around, you know, Brady Cook kind of as the, the linchpin of all the energy and momentum and all the vibes there. And if he can't play, then he can't play. Now, I'll tell you this. If Cook goes, I know he said doubtful. He's not out. But if Cook goes – then I'm picking Missouri to cover and possibly win this one because I think that this is the week where if if Brady Cook can play and can actually be healthy, I think this offense is so ready to break out. I think it's a you know Luther Burden legacy type game, and I think that that's where they go. But because I don't think he's going to play and because he is doubtful, I'm going to roll with the tide. I don't really think that there's a case to be made for why they're great. But Missouri without Brady Cook is not great, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna roll with the tide. I'm gonna roll with you know Milro and Ryan Williams and all them to just be better athletes than what Missouri can put against them, uh, and find a way to cover that spread. Trey, last week we said that it was an elimination game in Knoxville. I still firmly believe that. But play this game with me. If Alabama wins, it means what? If Missouri loses, it means what? If Alabama wins, it means their hopes are hanging on by a thread and depend on them being able to win in Baton Rouge in a couple of weeks. If Missouri wins, they're all of a sudden in the driver's seat for a playoff because if they can win in Tuscaloosa, it's hard to not, it's hard to see a world where they're not 11-1 and one with the schedule that they have down the stretch. I know Arkansas will be tough. I know 
No SEC game you can just chalk up to a victory, but the, the meat of their schedule will be well past them, and they 11-1 and one would be on the table. I, I think at South Carolina, so their remaining schedule, uh, just for those of you playing at home, home against Oklahoma, that's looking like maybe the softest game on their schedule remaining, and I do <laughs> not say that facetiously. At South Carolina, at Mississippi State, home against Arkansas, um, I, I think stock slightly – more up on South Carolina and Mississippi State over these last couple South of weeks. South Carolina has to actually win games, though. Like we, we're, well, we're they stock do. high on them because they play good teams close, yes, and almost win, but they actually have to win a game. They're, they they're, have a good stock. they're I would actually good. stock higher on Mississippi State if we're making that argument because I think Van Buren's done something for that offense. I agree. I, I think South Carolina is an elite defensive team. And if they had a halfway competent offense, I think this is a team that is, you know, a 9-10 win team. But but that's really not been the case so far. I agree. Mississippi State certainly seems like they're headed in the right direction. They stopped AM, who was trying to rush the ball down their throats last week. That Trey, that was one of our keys to that game. Was AM, I believe you said should be able to name their rushing total. They were stuffed for at least for the first half. Yeah, they had they had some big runs called back by some questionable holding calls. They did. But. They they did. But but the plays that stood, you know, props to Mississippi State. There were a lot of there are a lot of steps that the Bulldogs took last week. So yeah. anyway, all of that to say, Missouri is it's felt like since they got just waxed by the Aggies in College Station that Missouri's an afterthought to the playoff. That's very much not the case. If they can win in Tuscaloosa, if they can find a way to navigate a couple of tricky road games at South Carolina, Mississippi State, you're right. Missouri will not only have a chance at a playoff, but probably kind of a right to one of those at-large bids. And you know who knows? Who knows what happens in the SEC standings? We've got a lot of ball to play still, and uh, one loss in the conference uh, certainly does not eliminate you from getting to Atlanta. Gracious, how about that? 